Hello, I'm Maria Hall Brown, and this is LA Currents. A new report says that temperatures worldwide are up by one degree. It's wetter in the east and drier in the west. Here locally, our snowpack is down by 40%, and we're into a second year of a severe drought, and so you know what that means for Los Angeles. Here to tell us how we can protect ourselves and make sure that everything goes well this fire season, I'm delighted to be joined by Fire Chief Ralph Teresa. The threat of fires here in SoCal, how bad is it really? Well, Maria, I wish I had some good news. It's, uh, it's going to be bad. It's been bad the last few years. And it's due to three main reasons primarily. It's the drought, which you just mentioned. It's climate change. And the third reason is people are moving into the wildland urban interface. So last year in the state of California, over 4 million acres were burned, which was double the previous record. So we're anticipating another busy year. And from what I understand, fire season has always been X amount of time, and now it's longer. That's correct. Uh, the height of our brush season is usually September to I'd say January. That's when the Santa Ana winds are most common. But it has become a year-round threat. Uh, earlier in the year, the fuels are still moist, so it really doesn't get a chance to pick up steam, and the Santa Anas aren't pushing it. So I, we count on putting it out with our initial uh, action uh, engine companies. And usually we do. Uh, it's when the Santa Ana's kick in and it's been dry and we haven't had rain for a long time, it rapidly spreads, then becomes a real challenge. Okay, so with all of this unfortunate information that everyone has been able to gather, and this is incredibly pertinent to you as fire chief, what is LAFD doing in order to help prepare for the worst as you keep your fingers crossed for the best? We uh, do this every year. We've been doing it for most of my career. I have 37 years now in the fire department. And um, we have annual training, refresher training for our chiefs and our captains. We have annual uh, fire company brush drills to keep uh, uh, refreshed on all the skills that you need. We also are always looking at new technology to get a head start on fighting these fires. We're very proud of our relationship with UC San Diego. We've initiated the uh, Wi-Fi uh, projection system, so we know within the first few minutes where that fire is going to travel to. Uh, in the last few years, we added another layer of technology. We call it the Firus. It's a fixed wing real-time intelligence system. What that is, two fixed wings uh, launch, and they go above the helicopters. They fly the perimeter, and they send down images to our dispatch center, and I get those images on my phone as well. They confirm the perimeter of the fire, and that gets transmitted to the incident commanders on the ground. We serve that function for Southern California. We're the Southern California Wildfire Center here in Los Angeles. This year, we're going to have a greater number of cameras, the alert wildfire cameras. We have cameras throughout the Hollywood Hills and the Palisades and all other brush areas of the city. It's something that we were sort of talking about before we actually officially started this chat is fire science and learning the behavior of fire because it has certain patterns, but it's also an enormous quagmire of unknown. So what have we learned in particular because of these technologies that you just mentioned about the behavior of fire? Are we getting better at understanding what it's gonna do? I think we are. The um, Wi-Fi fire uh, utilizes uh, real-time weather information, known fire corridors, and it creates a projection. Uh, UC San Diego is a supercomputer center on the West Coast. So they can run through all these algorithms and they, they uh, shoot out a projection that gets sent to us at our dispatch center. Then literally, I can take a picture of the projection and then text it to all our field commanders. I also text it to the mayor and then whoever's council district it, that fire is in. So to answer your question, we have gotten better. Before, it was somebody's expertise who happened to be working that day mm -hmm. who would calculate what are the probabilities of, of this path of the fire. Now we have a consistent computer model that does it every day. Wow. Well, you can't protect 
people alone. You need actually to have those that are homeowners or just you know citizenry itself be aware and prepared. So what are you hoping that homeowners will do prior to this fire season, both you know in LA City proper and then just as these areas that you are talking about expand? The, uh, the, the people that live in the brush areas are our partners in, in fire protection from a brush fire. Right. First of all, they need to clear their brush, 200 feet minimum. That's the first thing we need our people to do. The second thing is to have an escape plan for your family. You never know where the brush fire is coming from, so have two ways to evacuate if you had to. And number three, I would sign up for alerts through the LAFD.org um, uh, software, excuse me, the LAFD.org website. Mm -hmm. And you can uh, sign up for Notify LA by texting 888-777. And if, in fact, the worst happens and there is a fire, I imagine that the most important thing is you, know, you want people to do as they have been requested. Please evacuate when they're told. Please move your cars because they can make it a lot worse if they don't, correct? Absolutely. We also have a red flag no parking program. Uh, we implemented this after the Oakland Hills fire around the year 2000 because people were evacuating from their homes and clogging the streets. That maybe people won't think about it. and I'm just going to toss out some things and you can say if I'm right or wrong. Um, extra fire, extra garden hoses you know attached around the house. Does that help you? Well if there's nothing else it, it, it is a help. Uh, our hoses are larger diameter and flow a lot more water but typically when uh, the system is being drained by multiple engines pulling water out of the hydrants the pressure is very low. I see. So depending on pressure, if we have pressure and water we'll use our lines. We can also draft from uh, swimming pools or lakes or the, or the ocean if we had to. Um, so we have alternative ways of getting water. But I would encourage people, if you have a hose, uh, to have it ready. Uh, those are, are rubber and of course they're gonna burn, but mm -hmm. sometimes you never know. It might be a tool that you may need. And also in terms of fire protection, um, I was listening to some fire prevention things, just be incredibly cognizant and aware of things that you may be doing that cause a problem, like uh, towing something with a chain and a spark, whatever. I mean, what are some of the things that start a fire that you feel as if someone didn't do on purpose, but they were not um, aware enough to understand? There's also, there's the usual things. It's like uh, unattended campfire, discarding cigarettes, a few years back, we had somebody who was clearing brush with a weed whacker and they hit a rock, which created a spark, which started a brush fire. Um, that is so ironic Well, and terrible, but still. Well, there's been some uh, provisions now. If you do that, you have to have an extinguisher nearby. You have to have the ability to dial 911. And there's some things that the city learned from that. Um, so last year or the year before, somebody was driving in Northern California on a flat tire and that created sparks, it got into the brush and it created a large fire. So there's a lot of causes, but about well over 95% are human accidental starts. I was gonna ask you that because last year being a record year in California fires, what the percentage were of uh, human accidents, uh, acts of nature, lightning, and then the most horrific component, you know, literally arson people doing it on purpose so it's mostly just human error human accidental starts the northern california fires were last year primarily lightning strikes and uh, down power lines uh, when the wind gets to be a high speed it blows the lines and they break and they fall into the brush where they, they arc and then you have the the start of a fire Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Maria. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to come visit with you uh, every time. And uh, your questions are challenging, and I get to share what we're doing in those areas, and I'm so proud of, of our fire department. Well, we're proud of you, too. All thank right, you. thanks so much. Thank you. And that's a wrap on this LA Currents.